The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. This week in FRC Media News, two police department unions take votes of no confidence in Chief Paul Govan. Residents come out against an ordinance to limit illegal encampments in Fall River and a local bank leader is celebrated as the One South Coast Chamber's Citizen of the Year. All this and more coming up. It's Thursday, September 12th, 2024. This is FRC Media News. I'm Keith Tebow. Two unions within the Fall River Police Department have taken votes of no confidence in Chief Paul Govan. In a story published by the Fall River Reporter, the Fall River Police Superior Officers Association and the Fall River Patrolmen's Association polled their members with 160 of more than 200 voting no confidence in the Chief's performance. The report stipulates that the vote comes on the heels of a lawsuit filed by Fall River Police Captain Gil Costa, who alleges Chief Govan retaliated against him for internal affairs investigations that led to being passed over for promotions. That story was reported by the Fall River Herald News. FRC Media has reached out to the Patrolman's Association and Chief Govan for comment but has not had messages returned. Mayor Paul Coogan, who appointed Govan chief in 2022, says it's a difficult situation when a labor union is not supportive of its leader, particularly in an organization like the police department. Seven or eight days ago, maybe a little longer, a little shorter, they started doing a, um, a ballot on um, their confidence in, in Chief Govan. They went around to all the members um, and they got their opinion on what they thought of the chief as a chief, uh, what, is it, what his leadership was like. And they compiled it and came to see me on, um, on Monday. The superiors and the uh, patrolmen, the two biggest unions down there, came together. Um, and again, the numbers were what they were. They were uh, very, very strong voting and no confidence for the uh, chief. Um, I've since met with the chief a couple of times. Uh, this is a very, very um, sticky situation. Um, there's a lot of discontent down there. It's not unique to Fall River. It happens in other communities. New Bedford's done it a few times. Um, and we're trying to work our way through this to see what's best for the safety of the residents in the city of Fall River. The mayor says he still believes in Chief Govan's ability to lead the department. I do have confidence in him, but at the same time, I also acknowledge the fact that there's uh, 200 people that work up there, the vast majority of which don't have confidence in them. So it's uh, it's like every other team there is. I mean, if I have if I'm uh, if I'm the coach and I have confidence in the quarterback and the offensive line and the wide receivers and the running backs don't, it's going to make you know it's going to make for a tough working relationship with the team. And that's what we're talking about. That's a team of men and women that protect the city of Fall River. It's got to work you know, as, as one unit, and that's my concern. And is it a, is it a matter of a patch-up? Is it a matter of uh, of them just not wanting to talk to him? Is it a matter of him not not wanting to work with them? I don't I don't know all the factors. We're getting to the bottom of it. I just, like I said, met with the chief today. So I'm sure going forward that there will, that things will work out. The Fall River City Council this week voted to send back to committee an ordinance that would allow the city to break up illegal encampments. The council is looking for some clarification on aspects of that ordinance. Before the vote, residents spoke out against that measure. Brittany Sylvia shared her story of homelessness and said the action would put an unfair burden on the homeless who have set up encampments across the city. For the better part of this year, I was homeless, displaced due to a domestic violence situation. I lived in a tent and relied on the support of outreach workers who brought me food and resources. 
Without the ability to camp, I would have had no shelter at all. Our city's already limited shelter resources made it clear there are simply not enough beds or options for those in need. The first step in our primary shelter has a waiting list that stretches for months. This isn't just inconvenient, it's a crisis. The proposed ordinance, which also prohibits sleeping on sidewalks, raises a critical question. Where would people like me go? It's difficult enough to find stability when you're homeless. Without a tent, vehicle, or a safe place to rest, people will be forced into even more precarious situations. This ordinance would only push the homeless further into the shadows, making them less visible to the support services that can help. Alan Oliver has lived in Fall River for nearly 60 years. He said the council should focus on the broader issue of creating more affordable housing. I really want you guys to start doing something about getting down to the bottom of this homeless problem. You know, this thing of seeing the, uh, the officer of development on there, inviting people to come down from Boston, you know, to live here. And we have so many market rate um, units available or whatever. And not once did I hear the word affordable, affordable housing. Everybody's entitled to this. We are all children of God. City Councilor Sean Cadeen said the ordinance is trying to strike a balance between ensuring public safety while showing empathy for those who are homeless. A resident has the right to be concerned and, and fearful for, number one, their property or their lives. And as a legislative body, we need to address it. We may not be able to make everybody happy. It doesn't mean that we don't care about the individuals because we care about the individuals. We've tried to have these conversations about how we're going to get additional revenue. So to suggest and have all these individuals come here and say that we don't care with this or we're passing the buck, I, I just, please. We understand, Council. You know, I, I just, it, it's, it's, it's frustrating. The Fall River School Committee met this week and again heard from a handful of teachers unhappy that they're working without a new contract. The Fall River Educators Association is seeking compensation parity with other communities of similar size to Fall River. The school committee is offering a lower pay increase in the next three-year contract. Durfee teacher Nicole Jacobson argued veteran teachers like herself feel disrespected, that they are not rewarded for their level of dedication and expertise. For almost 20 years of dedicated service and credits beyond a master's degree, which I paid for myself, I do not feel that our current pay scale respects that level of hard work and commitment. For 19 years of service, I get a longevity stipend of $1,000 distributed over my paychecks, when you do the math of 180 school days, this is $5.55 a day before taxes. So my question to the school committee is, do you want veteran teachers to feel stuck? Do you want teachers who are uninspired? Do you want younger teachers to get the hell out of Dodge before they too get stuck? Or do you want veteran teachers to feel such a high level of respect that we are motivated year after year to better our craft and strive to be the best versions of ourselves for our students? I love my students, but that love doesn't pay my bills. So please show some respect for those of us who have dedicated our careers and lives to working directly with students in the classroom. Approve our pay raise and increase longevity, or you might just start to get a lot of warm bodies with a cold heart in the classroom. Durfee math teacher Josh Lopater is a member of the negotiating team for the FREA. He accuses the school committee's negotiating team of dragging its feet by not bargaining with a sense of urgency. When your team lies to us or talks down to us, they're speaking with your voice. When your team wastes our time, you're the ones wasting our time. When your bargaining team says you should have less prep time, you should have to do homework for your meetings, you should have to waste time filling out extra lesson plan paperwork, it's you telling us that. So as a teacher and a voter in Fall River, I ask each and every one of you up there, if you care about your employees and you care about the students, tell us why you think these are reasonable things to ask when we can't fully staff our schools, we can't retain the staff we have. Your bargaining platform, based on all those proposals we've seen, is nothing short of a disaster for everyone in our schools. Please, send your team back to the bargaining table ready to make a deal. Don't waste our time. Following the teacher's input, school committee attorney Bruce Assad gave an update on negotiations from his point of view. The issue is not the fact, and we've heard uh, a couple of times that it was a bad contract and it's not going to happen again. That's not the case. The case is you were represented by the same individuals, the FREA, 
and the MTA, and they looked at every document possible over the last several years. Uh, they reviewed it with their financial teams. We reviewed it with our financial teams. The bottom line was, at the end of the day, everyone agreed as to what would be a fair contract based on what the affordability was for our community here in Fall River. We have had this proposal on the table now since the 21st of August. We have not received a response yet from your union. You have not, we have not received a response from the union. We're hoping to have that response uh, at the next session. Uh, and the bottom line is, folks, that at the end of the day, there will be a contract. We're gonna work together, we're gonna work together for the students, for the teachers, and for our community. We're gonna get back to the bargaining table, and we're gonna work this thing out. The Fall River Special Charter Review Committee completed a report proposing changes to Fall River's Home Rule Charter. Committee Chair Attorney Rena Brown says the report will be filed with Mayor Paul Coogan and the City Council. The next steps involve state government examination before city voters approve any proposed amendments. If it's approved by the mayor and if it's approved by the city council, it will then be forwarded to the attorney general's office. They have a municipal law division and the charter will be reviewed for conflicts of law. The municipal law department just reviews our charter to see if it conflicts with any state laws. They don't recommend changes. They don't tell you to fix this. All they do is send it back and say, you, there are no conflicts with state law, or if there are conflicts with state law, they, I believe they'll point them out. I don't know how long that process takes. If we get it back and the Attorney General's office says, this is perfect, there's no conflicts of law, then it will go to the Secretary of State. We will ask that it be approved to be on the ballot for a home rule petition, meaning it'll if it all went quick, it could potentially go to the voters for approval November of 2025. The committee held over 20 meetings over 18 months, reviewing the charter approved by voters in 2017. The committee is recommending changes to how candidates qualify to run for mayor, city council, and school committee. To run for mayor, candidates must obtain at least 300 signatures from registered voters to qualify. City Council and School Committee candidates need to secure 150 signatures. The committee wants to reduce the signature requirement for all local offices to 100. Yeah, there were strong opinions about uh, let's open it up. and Because, you know, if you've never ran for office, a lot of people were discussing it's a lot to get signatures. So um, after... I would like to say this, the committee came from the point of view that we wanted more citizen interaction, involvement, participation, right? And so we felt lowering the number would allow um, more people to participate in the election process. The committee is also looking to change how candidates are ordered on the ballot, changing from a lottery to being listed alphabetically, and also remove the requirement that nomination papers first be filed with the city clerk before being certified by the Elections Commission. During the recall of former Mayor Jazio Correa, residents were concerned that the mayor was recalled but then re-elected on the same ballot. The committee seeks to simplify and clarify the recall process. We've changed it to two special elections. If the citizens that want to recall an elected official get the petitions and the appropriate signatures and they meet the requirements of having a recall election, then that recall election is an election all in itself. There'll be a special election, two questions. Do you want, you know, Rena Brown to be, remain in office or do you want Rena Brown removed from office? And that's it. And then there'll be another special election. And candidates for that vacancy will go out and get their signatures. And then if they have enough signatures that are certified to be nominated for that position, then their names will go on that next special election. Uh, we enlarged the time frame a little bit. Uh, it was 28 days in the old charter. We just enlarged it to 45. And then there will be a second election. If the person is recalled, that candidate or that elected official was recalled, 
they cannot appear on that second special election ballot. When it comes to citizen initiative petitions to change a city policy or ordinance, the committee recommends that if a petition qualifies for the ballot, it must be put before voters. Let's say um, a citizen is, is very passionate about fire hydrants being pink, right? And uh, there's a law on our books that say they have to be yellow. Uh, if that citizen uh, gets the required number of signatures, the charter we operate under now, and it's a lot of work and it's a lot of signatures, okay? Uh, that uh, initiative would go before the city council, and the city council had the authority to veto it and say, yeah, no, we don't, we don't care if fire hydrants are pink, we like them yellow. Um, and we felt that if citizens are going to go through all the work of, you know, formulating a petition, getting the signatures for the petition, that they certainly should not travel that road to get to our legislative body, the city council, for them to say no. So we eliminated the city council's authority to veto that. We'll be back with more FRC Media News after this. Your voice matters at FRC Media. Produce multimedia content that showcases your creativity and passion for Fall River. We have a state-of-the-art video facility and distribution system that residents and organizations can use for free. What you make of it is up to you. Find out how to get involved. Attend our next FRC Media Information Session on Thursday, September 26th at 6 p.m. at our studios located at Bristol Community College. For more information and to register, call 774-357-2354 or email info at frmedia.org. Here are some job descriptions on the latest hot jobs list from the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center. Environment Health and Safety Manager, Whirlpool Corporation, located at 88 Current Road, seeks a full-time Environment Health and Safety Manager to provide leadership, guidance, and direction to site EHS personnel, including performance assessments. Job number 21407047. MDS Nurse, Cavallo Grove Health and Rehab Center, located at 273 Oak Grove Avenue, is looking for a full-time MDS nurse to promote the physical and emotional well-being of nursing facility residents. Job number 21406014. Sales Floor Associate. Savers, located at 109 Mariano Bishop Boulevard, is seeking a full-time sales floor associate to assist customers process transactions and maintain the sales floor. Job number 213-98427. Barista, Europa Pastries and Coffee Shop, located at 65 Columbia Street, is looking for a full-time barista. For more information, call 508-678-5562. Firestone Complete Auto Care, located at 748 Pleasant Street, has an immediate need for the following full and part-time positions. Service Manager, job number 21401292. Store Manager, job number 21401293. For more information about these or other positions, visit Mass Hire Job Quest at jobquest.dcs.eol.mass.gov or call the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Welcome back. September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month and Samaritan South Coast is commemorating the organization's impact in Bristol and Norfolk counties and promoting the use of the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. The launch was two years ago on July 16th. Our organization grew and we have about 50 employees who answer the calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're answering at a 96% rate and last year we received 40,000 calls. So the need is there and anyone of any age can call 
and talk about whatever they would like to talk about, whether they need to get something off of their chest, whether they're feeling stressed out about something. It's a confidential call. All our services are free. Ms. Lee says even though suicide awareness is highlighted in September, the organization provides outreach every month with a focus on youth. All year long, we are out and about in the Fall River community, in the Bristol County community. We're at outreach fairs, health fairs, providing information about suicide, answering people's questions, providing information about prevention, and helping to end the stigma around mental health. Something that we do with children is a really great exercise. We ask them to sign anti-bully pledges, and they can take those pledges home, and their coloring pages, they can color them, they can put them up on the refrigerator, or they can put them in their locker at school. Kids get used to talking about their feelings and their emotions. And if they can do that, then they're more likely to reach out to someone when they're in need. And they can certainly call 988. Um, three easy numbers to remember. It's there for anyone of any age. And they can talk about anything. It's free and confidential. Ms. Lee says since the end of the pandemic, there has been a growing need for crisis counseling. Now, since COVID, it's been a steady rise for the number of calls that we, we receive. And I believe that's because in society, we're more comfortable talking about our emotions. COVID really put a spotlight on um, crisis intervention. So many people were isolated and alone. And so, you know, we did a, a lot of media too around um, the 988 launch, which came so close two years after 2020 um, when COVID started. So there are billboards up all over the region. Um, there's signage on buses. So we're doing more um, media just like this too and so people are getting comfortable seeing that number as samaritan south coast sees calls into 988 grow the need for volunteers becomes more acute well we do have paid staff and we still have volunteers who are at the heart of samaritan south coast so if someone would like to volunteer just visit our website at samaritans soco.org and there's an application you can fill out. We have uh, trainings throughout the year, so we'll provide everything that anyone would need to answer our calls. And uh, we hope that volunteers will join us. And finally, a longtime community banker has been recognized by the One South Coast Chamber for his service to the region by receiving the Roger Valcourt Citizen of the Year Award. Pat Murray has served at Bristol County Savings Bank for 38 years the last 24 as chairman and CEO. In accepting the award, he gave credit to the dedication of his team and other community banks in their dedication to the South Coast. Community bankers are always looking for ways to collaborate with, early, with area businesses, as well as schools and government agencies to meet the growing needs of the communities we serve and support the local community. This is a testimonial to the several community bankers that have been honored with this award over the years. We continue to focus on that culture of people helping people. Last year alone, our directors, officers, and employees devoted more than 7,500 volunteer hours to area nonprofit organizations. As CEO, that is what I am most, most proud of. I hope through my example that I have inspired some of those around me to become more involved and engaged in our community. I encourage everyone here tonight to do the same and make a difference in your own ways. We'll wrap up this edition of FRC Media News after this. Hello and welcome to Hot Dogs and Cool Cats. Today we have Wolf Wolf is a one-year-old uh, domestic lawn care. He is a very sweet, loving boy. He's very playful. He's very good with people. Unfortunately, he does not love other cats, and he is also not a fan of dogs, so he would do best as your only pet. 
He's a very loving and cuddly boy. He will lay in your lap, and as you can see, he clearly enjoys pets. So if you are uh, interested in adopting him, just be aware that he is a long hair, so he does take a little more maintenance and grooming, and he will have a little extra shedding. The only other thing was with Wolf that we do have to state is he does have a heart gallop present. As you can see, it does not slow him down at all. He is still a very loving boy. If you're interested in meeting Wolf, come over, uh, come down to Forever Paws at 300 Linwood Street and you can fill out an application and come meet this man. Today we have Peggy. She's a seven-year-old Australian cattle dog slash uh, blue healer mix. Um, she was a owner surrender. She is good with kids over five. We believe that she is house trained as well. Um, she doesn't seem to go in her kennel overnight um, and will wait for us to come back in the morning to take her out. On the leash, she it does have a sort of medium pull, but she's not horrible. She does seem to be used to walking on, walking on a leash. Since she is an older dog, uh, she does seem to be a bit more calm. She doesn't seem to bark too much, um, wouldn't be too loud if she was in the house. But she is very sweet. If you'd like to come down to meet her, uh, feel free to come by at Forever Paws Animal Shelter, or you can check her out on our website, foreverpawsanimalshelter.com. Um, we'd love for you to meet her, and I'm sure she'd love to meet you too. Your voice matters at FRC Media. Produce multimedia content that showcases your creativity and passion for Fall River. We have a state-of-the-art video facility and distribution system that residents and organizations can use for free. What you make of it is up to you. Find out how to get involved. Attend our next FRC Media Information Session on Thursday, September 26th at 6 p.m. at our studios located at Bristol Community College. For more information and to register, call 774-357-2354 or email info at frmedia.org. That'll do it for this edition of FRC Media News. Visit our website, frmedia.org, for the latest news and local information. FRC Media News airs Thursdays at 6 p.m. and Fridays at 5.30 p.m. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Keith Tebow. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you next Thursday.